let's work some, with some actual geometric series using the, the geometric series convergence formula. So what we want to do is we want to find the sum if the series converges. So we do, we say, okay, I'm looking at this thing. Does the index start at zero? Yes. What's A? Well, if it's not listed explicitly, that tells me that A is equal to 1. And R is 1 eighth. Because that's R to the end. So then what I need to do is I need to plug it into my formula. one over one minus an eighth, so that is one over seven eighths, or eight sevenths. Simple enough, right? The next one's gonna be a little more complicated. I have seven plus seven ninths plus seven twenty-sevenths plus seven eighty-firsts. So how do I do this? Well, what I have to do is I have to find the pattern here. What I notice is there's always a seven in front, But then what I notice is it looks like it, so it's 9, 27, 81. Well, that can't be right, can it? So let me, let me change this. So I apologize there. Um, What I notice here when I look at the, this pattern is that it looks like it's being multiplied by 3 every time. On bottom at least. So it's really being multiplied by 1 third. So it's 1 third. Now, is that 1 third to the n? The reason why I say that is because, I mean, this doesn't have a 3 on it. And the answer is yes it is. And because when n is 0, then 1 third to the 0 is just 1. So that's, that's here. So you could write this as, you know, 7 to the 3 to the 0 plus 7 over 3 to the 1st, 7 over 3 squared, and so on and so forth. So that, you know, that's a little more straightforward. So then we have A is 7, and we have R is 1 third. So that's 7 over 1 minus a third, 7 over 2 thirds, 21 halves. So our, it's simple, it sums up to about 10.5. Our next one, 5 times 3 to the n. So this is already in the format that we needed. So I have a, and then I have r is equal to 3. However, in this particular case, r is not less than 1. The magnitude is not less than 1. So... This diverges. Now what about this one? I mean, if I look, it looks like r is also greater than 1. But it's not. The reason it's not is because, oh, that's 3 to the negative n. So what I have to do is I have to watch out for that. So I need to rewrite this. I need to rewrite this as... five times one third to the n. So then a is five, r is one third, give me 15 halves. Now over here is kind of a tricky one. Okay, I've got a and I've got r, but I have two issues. My index doesn't start at zero, and my power is to the n minus one, not to the n. So there's a couple ways to do this. I'm gonna show you a way that's a little different than the way I did in the basic explanation. And it's the, it, it works just like what you think of as like a u substitution. Hear me out. I'm gonna say, I need this to be n, so I'm gonna say let, let k equals n minus one. 
Now we're not going to like do a dk and a dn, but if k is n minus 1, does it make sense that when n is equal to 1, that k is equal to 0? Right? If I plug in 1 for n, I get 0 for k. Why am I doing that? Well, then I can rewrite this. I can say that's k equals 0 to infinity. Now, when n is infinity, k is also infinity, so that doesn't matter. Now I have 4, 0 0.8 to the k. So now I actually have a 0 indexed series. And this particular method is much more in line with how you would do this if you had to do this over and over again. So to do that, I say, okay, well, that tells me A is 4, R is 0 0.8, so it's 4 divided by 0 0.8, so that's 4 over 0 0.2, or 20. Okay, simple enough. Our final one's a little trickier. So in this particular case, it looks like a is just one because there's no, there's not any coefficient there. And r is cosine of a hundred. Okay, so let's we'll get there in a second. And we have n, but we have a one indexed array. So how can I do this in a meaningful way? Well. Um, the first question you might ask yourself is, is this thing even, is the magnitude less than 1? Because if it's not, it doesn't matter. It's going to diverge no matter what. But cosine of 100, well, if you think about the value of cosine, the value of cosine always goes between negative 1 and positive 1. But the problem is, is it can actually hit negative 1 and it can actually hit positive 1. So how do I know if cosine of 100 is going to hit negative 1 or positive 1. Well, it turns out that cosine only ever hits negative 1 or positive 1 if it's some multiple of pi, right? So it would have to be like pi or 2 pi or 3 pi or 4 pi. Well, 100 is not a multiple of pi. It doesn't divide evenly by pi. So you know for sure that its magnitude has to be less than 1. It might be negative, but it doesn't matter. If I took the absolute value, it would still be less than 1. So I'm good there. But I need to do this in re-indexing. So I'm going to say, when we do re-indexing, we don't really worry about this piece. We really are trying to get this to equal 0. So I say k equals n minus 1. Because that's the end of the day. I want these index indices to match. So I'm going to rewrite this. If I add 1 to both sides, n is equal to k plus 1. So we're going to use that here. So now we have k equals 0 to infinity cosine of 100 to the k plus 1. But now we're kind of hosed, right? Because the formula, you know, that, that has to be, that isn't n plus 1, that's just n. So how do I solve this? Well, what I do is I use the properties of exponents. So I can say, all right, I can split off cosine 100 and cosine 100 to the k because this is like cosine 100 to the first power, right? The properties of exponents say I can split that out as long as the total, num the total exponents add up to this that I'm good. That's just standard algebra. Well then now that tells me that this is A and this is R. So my answer is cosine of 100 or 1 minus cosine of 100. Now, I don't know what that is. I don't have to know what that is. But I do know that it converges to that and I could plug it into a calculator if I wanted to see the value. 